Greetings, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Ranking Every series. I'm doing something a little bit different today, as you can tell. Uh, you know, in the past, the way I handled this series was extremely inconsistent. I didn't really have a sandstone formula for <laughs> ever since I started the series. So now I'm doing this. I hope you guys enjoy it. I, I hope it works. <laughs> And while you're at it, uh, make sure to leave some of your opinions down in the comments section uh, and see, tell me how you would rank uh, these movies that I myself am about to rank here shortly. I, I mean, we're talking about the Disney direct video sequels here. How bad could it get? So just a heads up, I'm only ranking the movies that I have personally seen when I was growing up. And it's all based on my own opinion, obviously. So I know a lot of you are probably asking, well, why haven't you seen the rest? Let me put it this way. Yes, I have Disney+. Plus. No, I'm not going to watch them. I simply don't have the motivation to study all of them in one video. For one thing, it would take way too long, since there's like 15 plus more or something like that. And I've always been a firm believer in the phrase, less is more. The less movies I have to work with, the more I can talk about them. So now that I got that out of the way, let's talk about the movies themselves. I'll say it right now. I don't hate any of these movies. I really don't. Some of them at the top of my list are actually, I think, genuinely pretty good. There's only one that kind of pisses me off. And once we get into the actual ranking, you could probably tell which one it will be. So without further ado, let's get started. Oh, and by the way, these that you see on your screen are the contenders for the list. Yeah, I'm not a princess guy. So coming in at number 12, the absolute worst, The Fox and the Hound 2. <sighs> what a disgrace this movie is. Talk about disrespecting the original source material. This is the prime example of that. The plot, from what I remember, revolves around a young Todd and Copper. They go to the annual county fair, or state fair, whichever it is, and they discover this country dog band. Copper is immediately infatuated with the band and wants to join in, so Todd initially you know, gets Copper's wish, I think, and then Copper is officially declared as a member of the band. And then, of course, Todd gets jealous and doesn't speak to Copper again. You already know where this is going. But then, of course, at, at the very end, they make up somehow, I don't fully remember, and they become best friends again. That is literally the entire plot. I, I, I wish I was making that up. First of all, the movie shouldn't even exist because we already know that Todd and Copper are going to make up at the end. Because if they didn't, it wouldn't make any chronological sense for the first movie. Because in the first movie, if you've seen the first movie, most of you probably have, you would know that when Copper, young Copper, when he has to go on his hunting trip, he dismally howls to young Todd as a way to, you know, signal to him that he clearly doesn't want to leave Todd behind. So what was even the point of the second movie? Oh, just because we can see what was going on between their friendship before they parted their own ways. Well, my friend... 
what we got was terrible and not at all in the theme of the first movie. How do you go from this? Papa, we trapped him now. To this. Sun and blue skies, like summer nights, and fireflies, like a dead hand to scratch. We're the perfect match, cause we're in harmony. Okay. So be it. Maybe they want to be their own thing. But again, if that was the case, why couldn't you just make your own original movie? I mean, I know it was by Disney Toon Studios. I know they, they don't really have the budget that, you know, Disney Animation Studios has. But still, I mean, I don't know. Maybe it would have been just a nice little cute fun animal movie that, you know, does not capitalize on a, a actually well-made product from your higher-up studio, hmm? Whatever, though, I digress. Like I said, I don't hate the movie. I don't hate any of these movies. This is just the one that, that I dislike the most. I only watched it once, so that's really why I don't remember a whole lot from it. So, whatever. I guess I'll just leave it at that. Kind of sucks, but... Yeah. So, command number 11. Brother Bear 2. This movie is just stupid. There's not a whole lot I can say about it other than... Why? Hilariously enough, though, the plot is almost an exact replica of the Fox and the Hound 2's plot. Even though this movie came out like months before that one. So if you've seen Fox and the Hound 2, God bless you if you have, well, you've seen Brother Bear 2. I mean, yes, it doesn't totally follow the same formula, but come on, the similarities are blatant. They're, they're so there that you can't unsee them. But the reason why I'm not as harsh on this movie compared to Fox and the Hound 2 is because the first Brother Bear was really nothing special, unlike the Fox and the Hound, which is one of my favorite Disney movies of all time. I mean, not top 10 material, but maybe top 15. Now, with Brother Bear, I don't hate as much as a lot of other Disney fans do. In fact, I think some parts, not the whole movie, some parts of it, especially the beginning, are kind of underrated. They're, they, they're almost Disney Renaissance level. But did we really need a sequel? Absolutely not. I guess when you boil down to it, the movie isn't objectively awful. It's just incredibly cliche and boring. But the one thing that drives me nuts, I could not stand it when I heard it, was the change to Keen Eye's voice. Oh my god, it doesn't sound anything like Joaquin Phoenix. I swear, the guy didn't even try. Don't need some stupid bear's help, I just need the stick. Okay, here. No, 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 I'll do it myself. Put it back. No, where you found it. Oh. T to the left, by the, by the little rock. Here? Yes. Uh, sorry, <laughs> sorry, it's uh, completely my fault, just me. <laughs>
Uh, listen, you've got something of ours. God, if that's not the worst change in cinema history, then I don't know what is. So yeah, Brother Bear 2. The only purpose I can see for this movie is for parental emergency. And I'm talking about really, 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 really bad parental emergency. If your kid has literally nothing else to do and they can't leave you alone for like a minute. But other than that, don't even bother. It's not worth your time. Trust me. Coming in at number 10, The Return of Jafar. Now, unlike the other two movies that I previously mentioned, the animation in this one is dreadful. It's by far the worst on this list. Now, to be fair, it was the first ever Disney Directed Video sequel made by Disney Toon Studios. And at the time, in the mid 90s, Disney Toon Studios was still in their toddler phase, so to speak. So, it's understandable to an extent on why the technical aspects of this movie are just so appalling to the naked eye. But despite all of that, the movie, it, it's not good at all. It, far from it. It's actually kind of okay? Well, okay, the, the, the concept at least, I think, sounds really good on paper. Jafar and Iago, spoiler alert, they get released from the, the magic lamp, and Jafar wants to take over the city of Agrabah once again, just like the first movie. But Iago actually doesn't want to. So he decides to side up with Aladdin and his friends as a way to, I guess, warn them. I'm, I'm not sure why, but to warn them that Jafar is returning soon. And then, at the end, they eventually defeat Jafar, and Iago is now declared a good guy. Now that actually sounds pretty promising, right? Well, unfortunately, of course, they mess it up by not allowing Iago's character arc to fully flourish. So instead of, you know, getting an actually good story about Iago's personal conflicts with whether or not he wants to side with Jafar versus Aladdin, Instead, they decide to flip-flop him. They keep flip-flopping him from good guy to bad guy, like in a matter of minutes, just for some just for some added drama. Guys, you don't need to make it that complicated. If you're not confident in yourself to change Iago's character, then don't change his character. I can sort of see the direction they were going for, as in the reason why Iago changes back to a bad guy is because he's easily manipulated by Jafar. But again, the execution does not do itself justice. Any justice. <sighs> this movie is the epitome of wasted potential. It really, really sucks. I guarantee you, if this was created by Disney Animation Studios, oh my god, it, it could have turned out to be one of the best Disney sequels of all time. I would for sure go watch that. But no, uh, we get this instead. But at least it had potential, even if it wasn't executed that well. That's why I put it above The Fox and the Hound 2 and Brother Bear 2, which had no potential at all. Oh, and one more thing. Just like Brother Bear 2, they changed the genie's voice in this one. It's not as bad as Keen Eyes. I didn't really mind it. But then again, I'm not a big fan of the, of the genie anyways. So take that for what it's worth, I guess. Coming in at number nine, Tarzan and Jane. Tarzan happens to be my favorite Disney movie of all time. And <laughs> this so happens to be a guilty pleasure for me. But even I can admit that, yeah, it's not good. Unlike the other movies I just mentioned, this isn't even a full-length feature. Instead, it's basically just 
three three episodes from the Legend of Tarzan series, TV series, all put into one, which are connected by, again, I'll admit, a ridiculous subplot involving Jane and Tarzan's wedding plans. Yeah, you're not exactly setting the bar high with this one. But like I said, this is a guilty pleasure for me. Now, I realize I'm probably being a little bit biased when I say that, but just hear me out. I like the action scenes in this movie. I especially like the ones involving the two Panthers. Now, yes, they appear in the movie, especially in the first episode, way too often. But for the most part, they're still quite intimidating, albeit not that intelligent. I guess the reason why I'm giving these two a little bit of credit is because I love Sabor from the first movie. And in a way, these two kind of remind me of her. I also enjoy the character of Robert Candler from the third episode. Now, yes, his motivation from the beginning is way over the top. But he still does a solid job as an arch rival for Tarzan's love for Jane. In fact, there is one line regarding him that I thought was so clever. And it's this one right here. I don't trust him. When I look in his eyes, it's like Sabor is looking back. One thing that I think the movie could have done a lot better with. I wish that Kala was in it a lot more. Now, I understand. The episodes they chose didn't even have Kala in them to begin with. But they could have at least included her alongside Jane, Turk, Tantor, and the Professor when they're talking about the wedding. But no, instead she doesn't appear until the very end when the actual wedding is taking place. Again, wasted potential. At least there's Tarzan too, but we'll get to that soon. If you're a diehard Tarzan fan like myself, you might get something out of this. But if you've never seen the first Tarzan, and if you don't even like the first Tarzan for that matter, this is not for you. You're going to hate this. Trust me, if you hate the first Tarzan, you're going to hate this a lot more. It will not change your mind on the, the franchise in general.